What's up guys? Welcome back to another episode of Mind Something. If you're new here, my name is Jake and in today's video, we're going to talk all about CASPA. CASPA overclocks, CASPA price, CASPA news, maybe some other news. But before we get into it, do me a favor, hit the like and hit the subscribe if you haven't already. So we're going to take a look at the market first, but man, <laughs> this is the second time I have to record this video because I just did the entire thing and only the audio was recording. And I thought I could just, yeah, I'll just follow along. But all of the prices that we talked about were incorrect or at least different from what I was saying. So now I get to re-record it. Anyways, the time of recording is 8.52 p.m. February 27th, 2023. Bitcoin is coming in at 23,442. Dogecoin is $0.08. Cents. Ethereum Classic 2133, Monero 149, Conflux is down about 35% on the week, currently sitting at 22 cents. EPOW is up a little bit at $3.88, Ravencoin down a little bit at 3 cents, Chia is down just slightly at $39.65, Kadena at $1.12, Flux at 87 cents, currently up about 6.5%, Caspa is just killing it. Currently, up 30% over the last 24 hours and 46% in the last seven days. And it is currently sitting at 0 0.0112. Ergo is at $1.65, down about 2.5%. Cortex up about 2% at $0.27. Cents. Darrow at $4.21. Nexa is up uh, about 4.5%. Also doing pretty well, currently sitting at 0 0.00001265. Neoxa. Oh, by the way, Nexa had an AMA on Twitter today. If you guys didn't catch that, uh, they talked about some of the upcoming things. And one of those things, if I'm not mistaken, was what they referred to as instant transactions. I don't know if they're going to change confirmations or settlement time somehow, but very interesting development. Anyways, uh, Neoxa up about 1.28%. And we've got Dynex up 20% right now over the last 24 hours, currently sitting at 0 0.08. And we've got Elysium at 9 cents, also up pretty good at about 11%. Radiance down about 2.5%. Hive Mappers sideways and Meowcoin is down 13.5%. And let's go ahead and look at emissions over the last 24 hours. So uh let's see your caspa has jumped up considerably currently sitting at 240,000 a day catching up to chio which is sitting at 369,000. monero at 67,000. nervos at 65,000. ergo at 62,000. conflux at 54,000. flux is up a little bit back up to 40,000. and sia coin 16,000. and dynex 14,000, which is also up from yesterday if we take a look at difficulty, Bitcoin is still up 10% over the last seven days. Dogecoin down about three. I uh, saw some interesting ones. So Caspa is up about 10.5%. And Bitcoin Cash is also up about 4.5%. But Dash is down 31%. And Monero is up 33%, which is kind of odd considering the price is down 7.5% over the last seven days. Nervos is about the same. Um... Ergo down about 2.5%, Conflux down 50% over the last 7 days, and we got Flux down about 7.5%, and Dynex down about 8%. So before we get into GPU mining profitability, I'm going to do ASICs first, and you'll see why here in just a moment. So right now... The D9 still on top at only $21.42, the K7 at $19.24, the KA3 at 18 dollars I'm just going to kind of scroll through these so that you guys can see the rest. I'm kind of in a hurry since I've already recorded this video once today. Um, but let's talk about GPU mining profitability. So at $0.10 cents per kilowatt hour, we cover this every day on a 3070. And it's important that we keep doing the exact same comparison day to day. So we're comparing apples to apples, right? But I'm going to explain to you, as many have already done, how important it is for you to put in your own numbers and not necessarily trust what you see here. So right now, Nexa is on top at 17 cents a day in profit. Ergo and Caspa at 15 cents. Caspa is up to 10 cents in third place, followed by NiceHash 
with six cents, and then Dynex at four cents, Elephium three cents, Fero one cent, Radiant one cent, Cortex break even, as well as ETH POW, Elephium, and Ergo and Vertcoin. And then everything else is going to be negative. We'll take a look at Flux, negative nine cents. So why it's so important to put your own numbers in the calculator. So first, let's take a look at a 3070. So notice their overclocks, they have two different options, one for higher power, one for lower power. And the lower power one's gonna get you a little bit more profit at 11 cents a day, 31 cents a day in revenue, burning 84 watts. Now let's take a look at my actual numbers. So as far as a 3070 is concerned, we're getting right at 500 mega hash at 60 watts. Now granted, this is in software, but NVIDIA is usually pretty darn close. Now, of course, this is not accounting for the rig itself or the CPU, power supply, fans, all that good stuff, but NVIDIA is usually pretty close here. So if we take these numbers and throw them into the calculator, we come up with 31 cents a day in revenue, but 16 cents a day in profit as opposed to 11 cents a day in profit and my overclocks are different i'm not using either of these i am currently actually don't don't pay any attention to this either uh, we set this up in the flight sheet so in flight sheet you can see i'm running lock memory at 810 and the core at 410 and i guess technically we are using 300 here for the core offset um, but yeah, way different than what hashrate.no's got listed, which is kind of surprising to be honest with you because hashrate.no is usually a bit more optimistic with their overclocks than I'm able to achieve on certain cards and certain algorithms. But when it comes to Caspa, let's take a look at a few other GPUs. So this is a 3070 Ti. They're saying use 255, 1500, and 810. This should get you 34 cents a day in revenue at 14 cents a day in profit. However, with mine, I'm getting 32 cents a day in revenue and 18 cents a day in profit. And going back to my rig, so at 3070 Ti, they're all getting about 520 mega hash at 60 watts, as opposed to 552 at 82 watts. How about a 3080? So a 3080, they are getting 46 cents a day in revenue and six cents a day after power. But my 3080, oh, <laughs> darn it. Uh, when I recorded this video previously, I got off of this page, but let's just go to the calculator, pull up the farm. So on a 3080, we are getting 728 mega hash at 102 watts. There's three of them in here. They're all three getting 102. So 728 at 102. Yeah, 47 cents a day in revenue and 22 cents a day in profit as opposed to six cents in profit. That, that's a significant difference. Now, granted, we're talking about pennies, but if you've got hundreds of GPUs, this makes a significant difference if you're trying to figure out what you want to mine. So, as many have said before, put in your own numbers. Anyways, moving on. So, I told you guys I would tell you every day what I'm mining. I have moved the entire farm over to Caspa. I have completely FOMO'd. <laughs> I feel like Caspa is going to continue to do amazing things. I still have a lot of faith in some of the other projects that I've been mining, but it's got me, and it's sad that it's got me now because now would probably be an opportune time to mine something other than Caspa because you know how it works. Everybody FOMOs in, and then <laughs> hash rate goes up, difficulty goes up. As you can see, hash rate jumped from 348 to 394 in the course of just a few days here and of course difficulty is going to match caspa's algorithm does apply difficulty and hash rate pretty evenly so yeah i, I could be mining something else maybe next and being a bit more profitable but 
I got it bad. I, I, I need to collect more. I have a pretty equal amount between Nexa and Cast, but those are both pretty heavy holdings that I've got right now. But anyways, let's move on and talk about my video from yesterday. And I'm going to let you guys read this. I don't want to mention these two words right here because it seems to get me in a little bit of hot water. And it's very frustrating because there are things that I want to cover, but in order for this channel to succeed and reach as many people, I feel like we can approach these subjects and reach more people better in the future if I just focus more on giving you guys helpful information that isn't necessarily leaning towards opinions, so to speak. And everybody else who's a YouTuber can confirm it does affect views. And I think you guys know how I feel about the situation, so I'll just leave it like that and let's move on and talk about Casper some more. So we talked about this chart yesterday. I was showing you the support line that seems to be holding us up in a few key areas. And I mentioned that if the rest of the market were to perhaps come back down, we would probably hit significant resistance because we had already met where we were on our previous all-time high. Uh, but we pumped right past it. But just a heads up, if we do come back down, let's say, for instance, the rest of the market turns, uh, hopefully this trend line will catch us. So perhaps we won't be going below the price that you see there, but not financial advice, do your own research. And some of the reasons that CASPA may be pumping at the moment I wanted to cover. So in case you guys were not aware, I saw this in Discord. They now have two hardware wallets willing to integrate CASPA free of charge. But both these teams would like to have some preliminary estimation of community interest towards their product. Thus, here we go. So we've got Tangent Wallet, uh, which is a hardware wallet, and then we've got One Key hardware wallet. So the One Key has several different options for you. You've got the One Key Mini, the One Key Classic, One Key Touch, the One Key Light, which seems to be similar to the Tangent. And then you've got the One Key Key Tag. And as far as the tangent one they actually have uh, a little infomercial type of thing where it explains how you use the card in conjunction with your phone as a hardware wallet and you don't need seed phrases and such which is interesting and uh, I've been using the what is it uh, wallet.caspanet.io that's what was originally available when I first started mining and that's where I pretty much just kept everything but I would you know, considering what CASP was going to do in the future, in my opinion, uh, I would feel safer with a hardware wallet, and I'm probably going to be taking a look at these. So, yeah, I'll let you guys know how that turns out. And then lastly, wanted to get into just some of the major headlines. Not going to cover an in-depth article, but just wanted you guys to be aware of some of these. So, Americans frustrated by financial system inequality... 20% own crypto. This is a very interesting article you guys should check out. Then we've got DCG loses top 1 billion of the back on the back of 3AC collapse in 2022. Robinhood subpoenaed by the SEC over crypto listings and custody. That's probably going to be a big deal. And then Blur runs after OpenSea market share, but its success depends on upcoming governance proposals. And Solana outage triggers ballistic reaction from crypto community. But uh, yeah, before we get out of here, guys, I just wanted to mention one more time Satoshi Action Fund. If you guys ever consider donating to the channel, send it to these guys instead. Uh, they are out there advocating for miners and making sure that we are not discriminated against and doing it on a very high level. And... Uh, they deserve the support much more than I do. So if you do ever feel so inclined, uh, please go there. You can donate crypto or, or, excuse me, either Bitcoin or whatever crypto they accept. And also, if you're looking for hardware, check out Coastal Crypto. I noticed a tweet they put out the other day that they were considering purchasing an order of 100 E9s. And if they found somebody who wanted to go in with them, they were going to do 2,500 total shipped with tax and VAT all included, which is a pretty significant deal, uh, and kudos to them. Anyways, that's it for the video, guys. Hope you enjoy the content. Do me a favor before you go, hit that like and hit the subscribe, and I will see you guys on the next one.